What you're about to see defies belief and the laws of gravity. A young man clinging to the side of a sheer rock face, a thousand metres up, with no ropes, no harness, nothing to catch his fall. All that keeps him from plunging to his death are his toes and fingertips. This madness is called free soloing, and no rock climber in the world does it better than 26-year-old Alex Honnold. Using only his body strength and amazing mental stamina, Alex scales cliff walls as high and steep as the world's tallest buildings. But if you're anything like me, just watching this report from American 60 Minutes' Lara Logan will have you clinging to the sofa for dear life. Here, Alex Honnold is 2,600 feet above the Yosemite Valley floor, trying to haul himself up the slippery granite wall of Sentinel. He's so high, he disappears into the mountain. Alex moves seamlessly across a section of flaky, unstable rock, pausing to dry a sweaty hand in his bag of chalk. There's nothing but him, the wall, and the wind. He's up here without ropes or a safety harness. All he has is a pair of rubber climbing shoes. This is what climbers call free soloing, and it's so dangerous that less than 1% of people who climb attempt it. Do you feel the adrenaline at all? There is no adrenaline rush. You know, like if I get a rush, it means that something has gone horribly wrong, you know, because the whole thing should be pretty slow and controlled and like, I mean, it's mellow. Does the challenge appeal to you? Yeah, for sure. Or being able to, like, always being able to push yourself, like always having something bigger to do or harder to do, or any time you finish a climb, there's always the next thing that you can try. This is Alex in the film Alone on the Wall. He's done more than a thousand free solo climbs, but none were tougher than this one. Here he is, just a speck on the northwest face of Half Dome. You can barely make out the Yosemite Valley floor below as he pauses to rest. He's the only person known to have free soloed the northwest face of Half Dome. What do you consider Alex's greatest achievements to date? That he's still alive. If you look at the past, people that have made a real habit of soloing, you know, at least half of them are dead. In the 70s, John Long was one of the best rock climbers in the world. Today, he's an elder statesman in the climbing community. It's indescribable what it's like to be up real high because, you know, but you, you can get some kind of idea about it just by walking to the edge of a cliff or the edge of a building. There's Where you all... just lose your stomach. Yeah. And the, the, pro the, the real challenge about climbing without a rope is the fact is that feeling can come up full bore in a split second. And you have to control that. Yeah, you're gonna have to you got you're gonna have to dial that one back really quickly. Or else your diaphragm is gonna close. You're not gonna be able to breathe. Actually, you have no chance. You're gonna die. From when I started climbing, from when I was maybe 10 or 11, I don't, I don't even remember when it was so long ago. But, but I mean, that's all I ever was into, really. Back then, he was a shy, skinny kid with big ears. Today, he's still skinny, but his five foot 11 inch frame is 160 pounds of muscle. For someone his size, he has big hands. They have to carry his whole body weight when he's hanging off the rock. Yeah, I have pretty big fingers, so it's hard to get it into a thin crack. Show me. Yeah. Oh. Were they like this before you started climbing? I don't think they were quite this big before I started climbing. I think that, I honestly think my connective tissue and stuff has like gone, like they've just Bigger? all just gotten beefier, you know? Yeah. I think it's all the like crack climbing, like torquing your fingers in different ways. So, this is really your home? Yeah, this is. When I'm in the U.S., this is mostly my, my home, you know. It's pretty comfortable, it's pretty cozy, you know, it's easy to move around. Do you just park on the side of a road? Yeah. Do you go days without showering? Yeah, of course. That's pretty gross. Almost everything Alex owns is in this van. He survives on less than $1,000 a month. You can go anywhere. You know, tomorrow morning I could wake up and I could drive to the East Coast and then climb there for the next two months. He doesn't like to admit he's any good, which is why he's known to his friends as Alex No Big Deal. You know, I'm not a very powerful climber. I'm more of an endurance climber, like I climb these big, long routes. Is there anyone else in the world right now who can do what Alex Honnold can do? I think there's probably a handful of people who possibly could get close to what he's doing. He's by probably unquestionably the best guy alive today. 
To capture Alex free soloing Sentinel, we assembled a six-man team of experienced climbers who would film at different positions along the route. We attached four more cameras to the wall and two 60 minutes teams set up on the valley floor. But as the climb got closer, Alex got restless. So the day before, he snuck off with his friend Peter Mortimer, an adventure filmmaker, to do something that would calm his nerves. He climbed an impossible vertical wall called the Phoenix. I never would have agreed to go out there with like a bunch of people. It just would be craziness. And honestly, you guys wouldn't want to see it. Like, it would be weird. It would be weird? Yeah. Why? What would be weird would, about it? I don't know. I think it would blow your mind. It'd be weird. Like, just the position is outrageous. This is what he means by weird. Look at the angle of this wall. It's more than 90 degrees and covered with mist from a nearby waterfall. The route itself is only around 115 feet long, but the cracks are so thin, his fingertips could barely fit inside them. Towards the top of the climb, the angle of the wall pushed him backwards. It only took him eight minutes, but when Alex reached the top, he was the first to free solo this route in the 34 years since it was established. There's only a handful of people who can actually do that with a rope. And the idea that he's doing that without a rope, you know, that, that's, that's an amazing thing to even consider. The next day, he was ready to tackle Sentinel's 1,600-foot face. I mean, basically, you follow that sunshade line all the way up to the middle of the wall. And then there's yeah, and showed us his plan for the route. Over the past few weeks, he'd climbed Sentinel with ropes and climbing gear twice to prepare, scouting out the best places for his hands and feet. Then he hiked for nearly two hours just to reach the base of the climb. We watched him on a video monitor from half a mile away. How tough is this as a climb? Very. <laughs> Nobody's ever soloed the North Face of Sentinel before. Nobody's ever thought about doing it before. Going rock climbing. So he's on. Look at that. He's, he started. Yeah, he's off. It's spectacular. So you almost have to, like, just stop and remind yourself. I mean, he is up there with nothing. Yeah, no rope. Nothing. Nothing. Right when he pulls into that crack, that's like the point of no return. It becomes world class right there. And he's, he's in it now. I don't even like the sound of that, the point of no return. Well, you don't, you're not going to reverse it. It's too hard. That's, that's, the, that's the one thing you got to understand on these things. Yeah. Once it gets to this level, the only way off is up. You're not, you're not going back down. It's just too difficult. So I like to think that I know what I can and can't do. Sometimes when other climbers hear what you've been doing, they say it's unsustainable, which really is their code for, you know, you can't keep doing this and stay alive. It's not like I'm just pushing and pushing and pushing until, until something terrible happens. I mean, I don't know. I just I don't look at it like with that perspective. But maybe that's why it's dangerous for me. You know, maybe I'm like too close to it and I can't tell that I'm like speeding towards a cliff. I mean, I don't think that I will continue to do this forever. But I don't think that I'll stop because of all the risk and all that. I think I'll stop because I'll just lose the love for it. As he approached one of our fixed cameras, Alex grabbed a tiny piece of rock and pulled himself up. In this position, most of his weight is on just four fingers. Here's another one of the really difficult time parts right here. You can see him, like the, his fingertips are only going into the first digit, like the line on your hand. Literally, that's what he's only, clinging only, on, his only fingertips. To there. One thing every free solo climber fears is water. It seeps out of cracks in the mountain, and that's what Alex ran into halfway up Sentinel. Yeah, see how he's wiping his feet off like that? Yeah. See, on his legs? Yes. It's wet. That's not good no, at all. That's the worst of all things, all possible things. It looked like your shoes did get wet. Yeah, my shoes did get wet. So the, the big fear would be that like, you step on, or you like, climb through wet rock, and then without knowing it, you put your foot onto something, you know, and then you just slip right off it. That would be like the worst case scenario, like thinking that you're going to step onto some foothold and then just having your foot blow off. His wet shoes didn't seem to bother him. Take a look at him as he climbed up to another one of our fixed cameras. He's so relaxed, even at this height. From up here, 80-foot pine trees below look like grass. And yes, he is whistling. Then came the toughest 50 feet on Sentinel and the hardest sequence of moves he had to make. If he moved too slowly, his arms would give out. But if he rushed, 
he could slip and fall. It's a position Alex says he lives for. Where he's right now, that this is this is this is the crux of the biscuit, as they say, the hardest part. And uh, because look at what he's holding on. Yeah, well, to there isn't anything. Looking. It's also it's really just... steep right there. Because you can't, nobody, even Alex Honnold, can't can't hang indefinitely on his arms. They're going to give out. And then he's got to have the strength to pull himself up. Yeah, and he's got to have. And, and the footholds aren't very good, so he's got to basically paste his feet on, you know, over the ceiling, and hope they stick. Alex somehow clings to the wall. As the camera moves away, you can see the river half a mile below him. He's through the worst of it. And from here, it's 400 feet of what he calls easy climbing. Should I go to the tippy top? All the way to the top in just an hour and a half. The first thing he did before talking to us was take off his shoes. Oh, okay. Hey, Alex. Yes? How's the view up there? The, the view is awesome, actually. I'm way psyched about the view. And the light right now is awesome. And, and all these other clips look amazing. And the water Alex Honnold has just set another record. But for him, there'd be no celebration. Just a two-hour hike down the easy side of the mountain. 